Hello and welcome to Down and Dirty with Darcy. I'm your host, Darcy Smith, also known as Career Coach Darcy. We are here to get down and dirty about careers, uncovering salaries, wild stories, backgrounds, and more from guests with some of the most eccentric professions each week. This podcast is presented by Onomy. Welcome to the Down and Dirty podcast with Darcy, where we talk all about what people are doing, what their jobs are, how they got into the jobs, and if they love them. If you missed last week's episode, we talked to Leah, a human design expert, so go check that out. And now we're going to go ahead and welcome Danielle into uh, the Down and Dirty podcast. So I have a nice little bio here for you, so bear with me. Danielle Campbell is a chef, food stylist from Los Angeles, California. After graduating from culinary school in 2014, she became a private chef. Eventually, she pivoted to food styling where she could explore her creativity and work with people that share her passion. Danielle landed her first food styling job in 2017 and decided this is what she wanted to pursue. Since then, she has worked on three cookbooks, done editorial, commercial, and television work. We will dive into how the heck one breaks into this industry. Danielle hates eggs and American cheese. (laughs) I I don't know if she signed NDAs, but we're going to try and ask her about what type of companies she'd work with, some names you might know. Um, So welcome to the pod, Danielle. Let's get down and fucking dirty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. How did you get started? I know you first started as a private chef, right? Mm-hmm. So you went to culinary school. So give us a little background how it all started. Have you always been in love with food? Mm-hmm. Like, did you know you wanted to be a chef? I have always been in love with food. Okay. Um, it started because I like to eat. Yeah, same. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> also, if you see us fanning, it's, what is it, 80, Ramey? Po- uh, uh, it's um, 86 degrees 86 in here currently. Degrees. There is a heat wave in LA and we are in the middle of it. It's rough. And the ice yeah, is broken. It's broken. So I'm, it's real professional over here at Down and Dirty. <laughs> We're dirty. We're dirty. I'm sweaty I'm and dirty. Sweaty and dirty. <laughs> okay, so back to you. Um, no, it's okay. I went to, uh, I went to culinary school. Um, I feel like a little late in life, but it's because I mm-hmm. wasn't sure that I wanted to pursue the career. Okay. Um, I was in the medical field before that, hating every minute of it, and then I had a nervous breakdown and was like, "You got to figure." You got to figure your shit out. <laughs> so I went to culinary school in 2014. It was like the best experience of my life. Where'd you go? Sorry to interrupt, but. I went to the new school of cooking in Culver City. It was like a, it was a private school. Cool. And there were only like 12 uh, students in the class. So it was a really intimate, really amazing. Is it hard to get into that? Um, at the time, because there were only 12 spots. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I originally had signed on to go to the Art Institute, which would have been four times the amount of money, uh, three times the amount of time, and I would have still been paying for it. Wow. So I'm happy that a week before I was supposed to start at the Artist Institute, actually, someone dropped out of the private program, and I was able to take their spot as the 12th person. So. And how long is that program? It was a six-month accelerated program, five days a week, you know, and every day, ate so much. Like you're just cooking all day? Cook all day, every day, and then everything we cook and generate, we eat for lunch. It was really great. Um, <laughs> Where do I sign up? <laughs> I, I would, yeah. I wish I could just do it like every six months. Just right. To, mm-hmm. um, anyway. And that was a great experience. And I just kind of jumped right into private chefing. I always knew I didn't work in, want to work in a restaurant. The energy of a restaurant just never seemed to fit me at all. Yeah. I've dabbled in it a little bit and just confirmed, no, this is not what Seems I want like to do. Seems like a hard job. Yeah. <laughs> but I, private chefing, I can imagine. Private chefing has its own um, issues, mm. obviously. <laughs> How I, did you get into private chefing? Because I feel like people listening would be like, I've heard of it. I've mm-hmm. heard of private chefing, but tell us like, how do you just start that? Like, do you just start like marketing yourself as it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So my chef. first client, I um, had a friend who had a friend who was a chef in LA and she was like, my friend Danielle's in culinary school. She wants to get in the business. So I started catering with him okay. and doing private dinner parties with him. And one of his private dinner party clients, uh, was looking for a chef. And that's how I got my first private chefing job. Um, and then a lot of it is word of mouth. Once you work for one family and people come over for dinner for those parties, Oh, who is she? It, it that's word just travels and you kind of are in this little community of people, which is what Mm -hmm. soon happened. How Um, many families at your height of private chefing were you doing? Like six. Wow. Every meal. Um, so I had one. <laughs> See, I don't know anything about no, this. No, no, no. It's, 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 and I apologize for not explaining. Um, no, I had one family that I would go to their house and cook them um, dinner every night. Mm-hmm. But earlier that day, I would be delivering their lunch and snacks and everything for the following day. Wow. And breakfast and all of that. Kids, every, the whole, yes. whole shebang. Yeah. 
<laughs> and um, then the other clients I was doing drop-offs for. So I'm just like cooking all day in a hot kitchen at home with no AC. Oh, it's um, like right now, but yeah, not it's, it's, I'm, I'm, You're bringing me back to yeah, the sorry. good old yeah. kitchen. And <laughs> oh, Turn on the sun. Funny yeah. story. Oh, God. One day I was cooking for like three families in the middle of the summer. It was so hot. I'm like miserable. And I look over at my taper candles. What's that? You know, like the long stick oh, candles. Okay. Yeah. And they're all laying and melted on the floor. No. And I just started crying. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like this is oh, it's like not, a fire extinguisher I moment. Can't do or this. <laughs> no, it was no, they weren't even lit. That's how hot it was in my oh, They apartment. were just melting. The wax, wax just melt. And it, I have this picture. It's so funny. They're just like laying on the whatever. Um <laughs> Ramey, can you pull that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have uh prepped that for prepped you. Prepped it, yeah. Um <laughs> we'll get better at this. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um so yeah, doing drop-offs for people, I did like better because you can cook in the comfort of your own home. Of course, if you have an AC, it's better in a dishwasher. Yeah. But you don't have to be in someone else's environment. That mm -hmm. was always something that was very strange for me, being in someone's house, in their personal space, listening to their conversations, yeah. seeing the dynamic between these husbands and wives and children. And it's very strange. I've never really liked that at all. How long did you do it for? Seven years. Seven years as a private chef. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. And, and when you first start, how do you price that? Like you don't have to tell us what your prices were, but like I have no idea like what you can make as a, like give us a range. In the beginning, I was, com I knew nothing about this. So I was still in contact with uh, my teacher from culinary school mm -hmm. and she would just kind of advise me on how to do it. When I first started working for them, I started charging hourly, okay. which is something I don't recommend at all. I think if you're private chefing, catering, whatever you're doing, charge a day rate. Okay. Um, Good to know. And it, and it was also getting kind of strange when I would work for families and I would charge hourly and they would be nitpicking the amount of time that I was cooking things down to like, oh, well, last week it took you three hours to cook and this week it's taking you four. You're like, I'm sorry. Well, food takes different amounts of <laughs> ribs time. Ribs take a little bit longer than a salmon. Well, that, Cheryl? it's funny that you say that because <laughs> Cheryl was like, I don't want you making any more braised dishes because they take too long. Oh my gosh. I mean. You're like, all right, you, yeah. you can have chicken nuggets for dinner. Right. And I was actually hired uh, for a family to cook for a two-year-old once Oh my where gosh. I was making gourmet chicken nuggets. Wait, gourmet, does that mean you didn't get to do the frozen ones? Or you no, just, I had to you make had them. You had to make them. Yep. <laughs> yes. Actually, can we talk later? Because I might be into those. <laughs> I want some. I want some. Flashbacks. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, they were like um, vegan. It was, it was, it was awful. Yeah. It, it, anyway. Oh my gosh. Um, Okay, so you're private chefing, you're yeah. doing all this, you're sort of kind of hating life or you're loving it? I'm hating it. Okay, you're hating yeah, it. But still not knowing what my other options are really. Okay, you don't feel like you have a calling for something else yet. You're not sure right. where that's going to take you. So where was the pivot of, I need to get the heck out of <laughs> private chefing? <laughs> like, what was your thought process in that? Unfortunately, it took a very long time. Yeah, seemingly um, seven years. <laughs> I, um, just some of the things that you encounter as a woman, as a woman of color in certain families here in Los Angeles, I think you can imagine mm. some of the situations I've been in or the things that have been said to me. Sometimes I would go home and just be like, what am I doing in these people's house? Yeah. And it's a really weird dynamic because you can fire them, but they can fire you. They've hired you, but they're a client of yours. It's kind of like a strange situation. They also sometimes feel like they're your friends, but yeah that's not and really. it's all word of mouth so you it's, do one little thing or right. something a conversation you hear and it's like I feel like that circle is probably like everyone it is and also when you are freelance and you work for yourself that family or these families were my sole source of income so even if I hated it I still had to go back the next day because if I don't work I don't get paid yeah and waiting for the next person to call um also it's really hard to market yourself as a private chef if you're not on social media. Now these days it's like social media, you can create an Instagram and blah, blah, blah. This was right. um, in 2014 when it wasn't really it wasn't like that. Popular. Yeah. Um, so I, honestly, I just stayed doing it miserable because I was terrified of not having any money. Mm -hmm. um, and what, logging. How, what were your hours? Like, tell us what you were working. Cause I can only imagine. Well, <laughs> like, cause you were probably at home cooking too, I'm right? So like, I mean, I would get up at like 10 o'clock have time to myself, maybe start cooking at 12 and wouldn't be done cooking until like 8 p.m. Wow. Yeah, because I had to cook for people, drop off, then go back home and go to the other family's house and be there to cook them dinner. Yeah. So it was it was a lot. And I'm it doesn't allow you any room to really be creative. 
unfortunately, when you're cooking for someone, people get caught in a routine. You're cooking the same thing over and over and over again. Their favorite dishes over and over and over (laughs) again. And you're just like, don't you want to try something different? Or when you have clients who don't let you use oil or salt on anything and request (laughs) you to burn their vegetables. No. And you're just like, why I... I, it Why hurts, am I a chef? It hurts your soul putting yeah. this in front of someone, and it's just it wasn't for me. They're like, no oils, no butter, no. No, nope. I'm vegan. I. Right. What else do they say in LA? <laughs> and some people love that, but I realize yeah. I don't care what you want to eat unless I care for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. My friends and my family, I love to cook for them, mm-hmm. but anyone else these days, I'm like, yeah, never <laughs> again. Okay, so you <laughs> you finally made the jump. Yes. What was that turning point? I um. How did that happen? Oh, I I think it was on Craigslist or something weird like that. I saw a job listing for a food stylist at Tastemade, which okay. I'm sure you've heard of. If not, it's like a food media company that started with the hands and pans videos and just food content on the internet. Can you define food stylist for the people that don't a quite know? A food stylist <laughs> is someone who is hired to make food look appetizing and beautiful for television, photo, magazines, a billboard, a movie, okay. a TV commercial, anything where you see food in media, someone has been hired to make that look appetizing. And am I correct in saying it doesn't always, it's not always food. Like you can make uh, a I piece feel- of food out of like clay or something. Um, not so much anymore. Back in the day, okay. it was more of that. I think legally now, um, like for instance, I have not worked for this company. Let's say Ben and Jerry's hired you. You couldn't do like a Ben and Jerry's commercial and use a bunch of fake ice cream. I think that has to be because that's false advertisement. Okay, you okay. know. So there's yeah. something Can't like play doh it up. Yeah, I, and it. also, <laughs> also a lot of that stuff doesn't really look real. I mean, if there's doctoring things up, making things look better, uh-huh. maybe putting stabilizers in things so they last longer, or freezing things, you know. But for the most part, everything I use is pretty much real. Okay. Um, cool. It always looks well. Like, whatever's yeah. going on at those companies, that's a whole nother. I would love to break into that. What it? What? What is it? Like a you know a McDonald's or a Burger King or those oh, places. They yeah. have their food stylists and they don't let anyone in and they've yeah. been doing it for years. But so it's you, still food. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> so you saw a Craigslist ad and you were like, I okay, saw, I saw a Craigslist I'm ad. Do this. I applied. I got it. And it was you know the videos you see on Facebook of hands making food, mm-hmm. and that kind of started it. Um, and I still actually freelance for them occasionally, but that's what started it. Um, unfortunately it wasn't enough for me to quit my day job, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't until 2019, at the end of 2019, at the start of 2020, when the pandemic hit, was I able to get rid of all of my clients and do full-time food styling. Nice. That's and there's awesome. a lot of other things that I think led to that. Um, um, I've been trying to break into food styling for a really long time, and I think it was just really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I started taking photos myself to build up my own portfolio because I wasn't able to get a job without any work behind right the, behind me. So um, – when you meet new people and you introduce yourself as a food stylist, mm-hmm. do they ask a bunch of questions or do they do you yes. think they understand? Okay. <laughs> no, they ask a bunch of questions. Yeah. I think it's a, a lot of people don't know it exists. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly why I wanted to have you on is yeah. like getting that understanding of. So I think you were saying that you now have like an agency you work with, right? That can right. help you book out. Right. But before that, you were doing all of your own bookings. And what was one, if you can share with us, what was one of the coolest like projects or companies you worked with? Um, that you got, you know, on your own just by building up your own portfolio? Um, I think that was earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a Coca-Cola campaign. What? That's amazing. Yeah. So what did you do for that? I made the Coca-Cola look appetizing and amazing. Nice. So like when they (laughs) pour it over the ice and stuff? Yep. Or Or when the talent, um, it was a um, campaign with Halsey. Oh my gosh. Um, So she's like painting? Yep. I think I've seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We got to sit there and watch her paint. The whole day it was great. Wow. Um, but there are certain things that you have to do to make things look amazing and uh-huh. appetizing and refreshing. And you know, you gotta sell that Coca-Cola. That's amazing. It was really That's fun. So cool. Yeah. What's um what's like the messiest or like weirdest 
like, working with ice cream is a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No food stylist ever wants to work with ice cream. Really? Especially in the summer. Oh, uh, we could not work with it in here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you'd you be surprised um, when you go to set sometimes and they're like, oh, by the way, the AC is broken. And you're like, great. <laughs> We're working with How ice cream today. How do you even today. get that? It's it's uh, yeah. There's a lot of dry ice involved. Pre scooping ice cream scoops in the freezer overnight, so they're oh rock gosh. solid. You know, sometimes with that, if it's if it's ice cream in a scene that isn't the ice cream brand, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, then you can use fake ice cream, mm -hmm. um, which is a secret mixture of some secret things. Oh, um, we can't ask about that. <laughs> uh, no, it's just like frosting and oh. um, <laughs> and powdered sugar, but. Um, then that's when you can finagle things because mm. work like you can imagine it's just a nightmare. What's your favorite thing to work with? I like beverages versus. I do love food. to drink style because they can get they can vary. Mm. Excuse me, I do like to drink style. Mm -hmm. You can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut anything out. We just told her you could do that, but actually you can't. <laughs> just kidding. It's just more kidding. authentic. Um, Speaking of, I'm gonna take a drink. I do like to drink style because drinks are very pretty. Mm -hmm. Flowers and you know you can pretty garnishes but yeah. because I'm a chef and I love to cook like just beautiful plates of food are my favorite thing to work That's with cool. or to style um I think I really love doing burgers mm -hmm. because that's one of my they favorite things to eat. yeah so um styling a burger is always a lot of fun for me now um, that you style so much though do you actually cook a lot anymore or is you kind of like or is it just for your family and friends um I don't cook as much as I used to, because if I'm on set all day, the last thing I want to do after standing for eight hours and <laughs> cooking for eight hours is to come home and cook for myself. Yeah. But um, on the days where I'm off, I try to cook for myself. Also, I just need to stop spending so much money eating out. Mm, but, that's my problem. You know, whatever. Yeah. I do I do love to cook because I don't have AC. Like right now, I'm not baking. The stove is barely coming on. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. it's too hot. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Well, we know that. <laughs> we know that. Um. Okay, I think you told us a little bit about like an embarrassing thing that happened when you were private chefing. Is there any embarrassing moment that's happened to you on set or anything that you can recall? I always like to ask my guests, like most embarrassing career moment. Um, I was on uh, a daytime TV show filming. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, their um, setup for the food stylist is not very great. It's not really a real kitchen. Basically, I was microwaving popcorn and set off the fire alarm no. while they were filming. <laughs> a live show? A live show. Oh, my gosh. They had to shut it down and evacuate the building. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's I a pretty I, good I, story. It was pretty bad. I've honestly yeah. never – I don't think I've ever fought back tears harder in my life. Oh, my ever. God. Yeah, I would have just like – Because the, the host of the show, they're like escorting her out. I'm so sorry. And she – they're – were they like pointing at you like it was well, our ball? I'm just kidding. So a few people I heard was like, "Who the fuck? Who yeah. did this?" And I was like, "Oh my god!" And then the fire marshal came, and he's like, "Guys, this can't keep happening." Oh, so it's like a normal. I was like, experience. "Okay, okay," but no one told me that. Yeah, I was about to cry. Yeah, no one told me that. So not my. It would have made me feel better, yeah. but I, apparently it does happen often because the set it's it's a horrible situation. But yeah, that was embarrassing but like terrifying they called yeah. me back after oh hey so, okay you did something right so it wasn't that you bad, popped that popcorn yeah. <laughs> and you know what to be fair i read the directions and i cooked it for Properly. two minutes <laughs> and then black smoke billowing oh out it was a gosh. nightmare oh no so don't cook popcorn um while filming anything yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Now that we know what, so, um, when someone asks you about like food styling, what's something that you feel like that people might not know about it or like if they maybe want to get into it, like listening to this, they're like, Oh, that sounds like awesome. Like what's some pros and cons that you would want to give to somebody that's interested? Um, one thing that's important to know about food styling and any freelance job mm -hmm. is that it's not for everyone. This lifestyle of having to find work for yourself and promote yourself and, um, it's just really difficult. It can be depressing. It can be scary. Um, and if you don't like, you're always waiting for the, next, you're always waiting yeah. for the next, for the next thing. And sometimes when work is slow, like around the holidays, um, you're terrified. Or for instance, if you don't have a nine to five and COVID hits and every single right. private chef job you had, canceled you because they're afraid you're going to kill them and mm. all production has stopped yeah during you know the first few months of 2020 I was like what the hell am I going to do oh my gosh um 
shortly yeah. after that production started up again around June and we were kind of like started up and I've been working since June of 2020, but those first few months were yeah. pretty crazy. So, and I've had some friends who have tried to break into the freelance life and it's just, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you just have to have faith in what in yourself and what you're doing and know that you'll make it eventually. Yeah. Um, well, on that on that token, do you feel like there is opportunities out there for people that get into that don't want to go into restaurant? Mm -hmm. Is there companies you can work for that are food styling companies that you can get like a W-2 job with or chefing companies that you can get a W-2 job with? Yes. Okay. Um, one thing, my experience breaking into this business, I think, is very different. Like I said, I was trying really hard to break into it and was kind of getting ignored. Mm. And I think one thing that benefited me, which also is kind of a, a weird subject, is in 2020, people were trying very hard to hire people of color. Mm. And I think I was given a chance finally. Mm. And then my work spoke for itself. Yeah. And then I've, and then of course, terrible I've, that I had to come to that. But. Right. But I, I do the, the influx of people interested in me during that time mm -hmm. was great. It was also very, hurtful because it was like, well, I, I've emailed you before. Actually. I've always been this person. I've yeah, always been. Thank there, you. there were companies that <laughs> and people who actually emailed me and were like, hey, this has been sitting in our inbox for two years. Sorry, we've waited so long to get back to you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Crazy stuff like that. So because of that, that is why I think I've one of the reasons that is mm -hmm. obviously not the only reason I do think I'm talented and I do think I'm good at my job, Hell but yeah. I think that's how I kind of got my foot in the door in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then of course it's my job now to carry it, to carry yeah, it on. Yeah, to where it is. Yeah. In terms of starting in this business, I think working at a food media company like Buzzfeed or Tastemade or these places where you can create content for Instagram or YouTube mm -hmm. are the only kind of jobs where you would have a W-2 where it would be like a full-time job situation. Right. Okay. Everything else is kind of freelance. Some people do like a part time or a, yeah. yeah. Um, so a food media company, um, working in a test kitchen, working <laughs> in a test kitchen, I think is another great way to get your foot in the door at a food company mm -hmm. and learning how to cook, learning how to work with food on camera. Yeah. Uh, what else? Let's see. Would you like looking back and stuff like obviously I know you took a while to get out of private chefing. Would you always come back to food styling? Like, do you feel like this is it? Like you're going to do this forever? I think so. I mean, I don't know how long like my knees are going to like want me <laughs> standing all day. Yeah. But um, I love photography. Uh -huh. So being able to combine, combine, not combine. Yeah. That uh -huh. is not a word. Either or. Um, <laughs> combine <laughs> photography and food. Yeah. Those two things are just – have always and the been creativity of it. Creativity. And, when I'm mm -hmm. cooking chicken nuggets for a two-year-old, I want to kill myself. Yeah. So this is fun. It allows me to be creative. Also, it gives you a body of work that you can like look back on. Like it's a photo. It's captured. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, That's so awesome. So I we I answered your question. I'm sorry. No, you did. Yeah. Okay. We um, kind of talked about this when we talked earlier, mm -hmm. but I'm really big on salary transparency. I love mm -hmm. people to kind of know what they're getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. um, what I don't know if you can, because I feel like it's all over the map when it comes to like um, being a freelancer, right? Mm -hmm. But like, what's like a range of working on a project or working on a set? Like, what does that look like as far as money-wise? There are two separate categories working for a food media company because they're a company they have their set rates there's no negotiation sometimes a day food styling with a food media company can start at like 500 a day okay and that's a whole Some, day yeah sometimes mm -hmm. less and taxes come out of that so it's, oh yeah it's not, it's not even what yeah yeah it's not great <laughs> um uh freelance food stylist obviously you can set your rates and um, how you want them some yeah. you can Rates can start from 800 a day and just climb all the way up. Mm -hmm. um, there's really – there's some jobs where I've gotten offers and I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that it was an option to make this much to on ask job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't think – You learn as you do it's, it. It's a matter of your experience, your portfolio, and, of course, the client. If right. you get a big client, they have higher budgets and – Do you feel like getting an agent or – is it agent or manager? Agent. Agent. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's helped you negotiate or – your fees? I am new to having an agent. I've only um, had an agent since January. Well, I guess it's not that new anymore. Wow, it's August. 
Anyway. Here we are. <laughs> um, yes, that is one of their sole purposes is oh, to good. handle all of that for you. So you don't have to talk money. You don't have to demand things. They do all of that for you. And it's amazing. That's and there's awesome. a lot of things that I didn't even know to ask for that my agent asks for. Oh, cool. And um, – like an air conditioned area for you to <laughs> yeah or like sweatproof clothes yeah no, um yeah uh kit fees um and you know mileage and just things that oh, okay. you don't think yeah. about when you're doing it on your own when you when you work on a set what's your favorite type of like tv movie <clears throat> you know commercial what would be your favorite actually my favorite thing to do is work on something small like a cookbook oh the really commercial jobs mm -hmm. are Helen Ray. Handbasket. It's, it's is that a you know hundreds, people like hundreds said. of people. Yeah, it's it's just it's really intense. Um, yeah. I recently did, which came out this week, a Jamba Juice commercial and campaign, ask, yeah. and it was so much fun. But it was a lot. It's it's yeah. so much. I like working um, on cookbooks. It's just you, the photographer, maybe the author, a real your assistant, just like a small team, and you're kind of just like That's in cool. this zone for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like so a, you're styling the food that that cook has made, or are you also making your face? You're making the food. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not making the food. Oh, yeah, well, I love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, down so, and dirty. <laughs> yes. So most, I mean, there are some authors of cookbooks who do their own food styling, mm -hmm. but you get the recipes from the book, and you are cooking. And that's another thing that I don't think people understand. I think sometimes they think I'm handed cooked food, and then I yeah, have to make I thought, it look pretty. Yeah, I thought so. I am start to finish cooking the food. Wow. Okay. So um, in, a, in a cookbook, if you look in the back in itty bitty writing, you'll see <laughs> there's a food stylist who made all of that. Oh my gosh. Or on daytime TV, mm -hmm. when a chef comes and is um, doing a cooking segment, mm -hmm. you're there's someone behind the scenes. That made all that food. So oh. it's not even that. It's not even the chef. No. It's literally. I you. hope I don't get in trouble for saying it's it. It's you. It's me. Yes, but <laughs> but just letting. I'm. This is wow. the sole purpose of letting a prospective food stylist know yeah. that that's what you will be doing. Also. This is the point of this podcast. Yeah. Like I want to know. Like yeah. the or also when you are. Um, oh my god! Am I going to get in trouble? I don't think well, so. I'm I not naming think... any names. I don't, whatever. Yeah, you're not naming um, names. And we also, I mean, like, I don't know if we'll have that many dirty. listeners. You're getting down and dirty. <laughs> yeah. um, on a segment like on, oh, I can't say the name of the show, a show that's in the, on in the morning. Okay. Where a chef will come in and what be like, we made this for you, whatever. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah. It's just really funny. It's just all BS. Yeah. yeah. I was doing a. Why a, do they do that then? What's the point of. Is it just for like because the chef's well known, like it has a name, the chef has a name. So yeah, it's they, like, don't, they don't have time to be back there doing that. Yeah. You know, they've just been flown in to do that TV segment and stand yeah. there and look pretty and whatever. And, you know, we're cooking their food and their recipes. Mm -hmm. But it's, do you eat it? Uh, sometimes it depends on what <laughs> like it is. the cookbooks. Do you like try? Oh, like, on a this was shit <laughs> on, a, on a cookbook shoot. There's so much food. Um, and it's really yeah. important to me also that food waste is very Unfortunately, I, I hate food waste, and I've entered a, a, a career where there's a lot of food waste. So um, I try my best to, especially on a cookbook, we're eating dinner at the end with mm -hmm. every, you know, we're eating everything yeah. that we've made that day. But sometimes on set, food is sitting out for so long, you yeah. don't want to eat it. Sometimes you've sprayed it so many times with Pam, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> um, Have you seen like companies do a good job of like having a plan for the food? Like maybe they're giving it to some, you know what I mean? I, it's the companies don't really it's it's my it would be my job yeah. I don't think it's the I last think thing the on their list the, it's the last thing on their <laughs> list so yeah I food that is has not been touched we donate to communal fridges um oh, I've good. worked on some sets where a food stylist had a a shelter company pick it up because mm -hmm. we had a lot it was an insane amount of food smaller amounts you know I can just put in the communal fridge produce um packed right. up meats and things like that um yeah. What else? I have a friend who will bring her compost bin mm -hmm. um, to set when I work with her, and I fill it up with everything, and she takes it and composts nice. it. So I think there are little things that we could be doing, but yeah. it's definitely something you have to be mindful of. Um, how, how many projects do you work on, like, when you're busy and stuff? Like, how many things will you work on per week or per month or whatever? Um, it, it fluctuates. I There are some companies where I just have, like, these one-day shoots every month mm -hmm. so that I could be doing – a few of those a week. Mm -hmm. But for instance, I'm like working on my schedule for next week and I have two three-day shoots in one week. 
they're like overlapping. Whoa. So it's like, um, you know, I'm working on one shoot and while prepping for another to start the next day, Mm -hmm. or I might have my assistant start prepping for that so we can go into the next shoot. So it kind of depends. The larger scale, like for instance, the Jean Vigier shoot was two days. Okay. So depending on the production, it could be a one day quick thing Mm -hmm. or it could be um, a five day shoot like I've had before, or, you know, it's a lot. For anyone that's wanting to get into this, do you feel like LA is the number one best place to be for the most opportunity? Or do you know of other cities that's like, hey, this is really big commercial shooting or TV, Mm -hmm. whatever, for food styling? I think for commercial, Los Angeles for sure, New York, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm someone who has loved loved editorial work, which is magazine work. Mm. Um, And unfortunately, that's not really a Los Angeles thing. That's more of a New York thing. Um, Bon Appetit was there and you know, all of those other huge magazines are there. Yeah. Um, Have you ever been flown out to a project? No, but that is, uh, have I? (laughs) I've driven to San Diego for one, but I'm in talks for actually a few out of state. Oh, cool. I was asked to go to New York for one, and New York just kind of freaks me out because the subway and public transportation (laughs) and, like, you don't have the comfort of your own car to drive around and get your stuff, you know? So New York is kind of scary. I'm not going to say no. But I'm just gonna have just to hire a pay for all that. I'm yeah. gonna have to hire someone to do everything for me because the like yeah. the idea of me like lugging bags of food on the subway, no, is no. just no. Uh, you're a getting little a car and you're gonna be yeah. fancy and like you only fly first class. I just feel like well, that's I, you know. I'm I, just kidding. I, <laughs> I'm just manifesting this for you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I hope <laughs> no more driving yourself to San Diego. Exactly. Okay, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I hope that's what I get because yeah. I. Um, yeah, I would like to travel for work. I think yeah. it would be fun. That is fun. Yeah. And then yeah. like doing the different projects. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. So really quick question. When you were in culinary school, how much focus was it on the food styling aspect of thing rather than just the cooking? It actually wasn't a big part of it at all. Of course, when we had to like submit our final dishes, they had to look nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, we weren't just like throwing them on a plate, but there was never like a side course or anything I took that had anything to do with food styling. Okay, uh, my teacher mentioned it a little bit, but If I had known about it sooner, I probably would have gone into it sooner. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, there wasn't much focus on that. Is do you know if there is culinary schools that would focus more on that? You know, or some type of like art that's like this grooms you for becoming a food stylist. Not (laughs) that I know of in culinary school curriculum, Mm -hmm. but I do know there's a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube now that offer food styling um, courses Courses. that you can pay for and take. Yeah. Do you know a lot of people in food styling that have don't know how to cook? Like that's the thing. That that have never been to culinary. Yeah. I think they they just have a whole different mindset on things and the way they do things. Yeah. When you know how to cook, you know how to make something look like something else without taking all of those steps, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That does make sense, yeah. Because you know, that was kind of, I said that kind of weird, but I can make something look braised without like having to do it or make something look grilled because I know what it takes to, you know what I mean? Yeah, Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think it's important to also know how things work so when you're plating a dish, it should make sense as to how it would have gotten there if you did it the right way and you knew what you were doing because you were a chef. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One more question. Have you ever cooked and styled something for a celebrity or a celebrity chef and they were like, what the fuck is this? Like, absolutely Like, not. they hated it. No, I have a terrible story about a celebrity, but it wasn't because they hated my food. Do Ooh. you want to hear it? Do yes. tell. Absolutely. Yeah. What is the story? Tell. Uh, this celebrity hired me to cook um, a steak dinner in their home for, like, 10 people and – Long story short, like I go in and the wife is like, I need you to take your shoes off. There's no shoes left in the house. So that was like number one, just like kind of irritating. (laughs) Then also, I don't recommend that. Don't cook in anyone's house with your shoes off. It's safety problems. Just wear, carry the booties with you everywhere. Um, So I'm cooking and she's like, you know, do you mind putting this cookie sheet in the oven Um, just in case you drop anything in the oven. I don't want you dripping anything. So put this cookie sheet in the bottom of the oven. I was like, okay, do the whole dinner. The dinner's a shit show because they all want their steak cooked 50 different ways. And as you know, if there's 15 people and 15 people want their steak cooked a million different ways, you need, there's so much time. So much time. So everyone's steak came out. It was, I was, it was a nightmare. And this is fresh out of culinary school. Fun. The end of the night, I clean up. They're like, we loved it. I still don't know why they loved it because it was a shit show, but they're like, we can't wait to have you back, whatever, whatever. I get home the next day. I get a call. 
hey, Danielle, just so you know, that cookie sheet that you put in the oven melted and melted through the floor of the oven. <gasps> What? So we're gonna need you to replace no, no, their no, no, entire no. oven. No, she told you to do that. You wouldn't have done that normally. Yeah. So oh, fresh out of culinary school, freaking out. Their lawyer calls me. Stop. <laughs> this story. We're gonna better. ruin you. You need to pay for the oven. And of course, I'm like, I don't. She told me to do it. Yeah. I don't have the money to pay for this. I wouldn't have done it if she didn't tell me to. Right. And first of all, why is her cookie sheet so cheap? Why are they that, melting? That, why should have not why melted? Yeah. Also, um, like, I call a friend who's a lawyer, and he's like. Fuck, like, I don't know what to tell you. Do you have insurance? I'm like, of course I don't have insurance. A lot of 90% of the private of chefs I know don't have insurance. Yeah. Um, what am I supposed to do? He was like, well, if she really wants to go forward with this, it would be something called, like, contributory negligence because you guys are both at fault because she gave it to you, but you put it in there and it melted. Whatever. Their Whoa. lawyer was horrible to me. Long story short, I replaced the oven. I no, you didn't. You did? No. Yeah. How much was it? Thankfully, her oven was as cheap as her cookie sheet. Oh, bitch. oh it was about five. It was about five hundred dollars. Oh, what, what right. the hell? Like she had a wolf, or a Viking, or a yeah. professional grade stove. Oh no, that could have been Thousands. in the thousands. Um, my Home Depot stove is like twelve hundred. So, what was she buying? <laughs> I don't know. It, but and where they, do I get it? it? it was <laughs> the celebrity. They were able yeah. to like take the panel out of the floor of the oven. You okay. know what I mean? Like there was yeah. like a piece. But it was a nightmare. It was, they were so mean. And so you legitimately paid for that. Yeah. A celebrity who has plenty. Oh, and and seemingly. And then in the defense, the lawyer, his lawyer is like, oops, I said he. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the lawyer is like, he's so rich. You know, you're going to regret this. You could be working for them for years. And I'm like, if he's so rich. And I know it was a mistake. And I'm sure they have homeowner's insurance. Just pay. Like. Also, I don't think I want to be working for him well, for years. Well, obviously, after that. Well, like, they even never, like I if never... he's that rich and not paying for right. that, or he probably didn't pay you well for the I don't even remember. Dinner. It didn't even matter after yeah. that point, because I had to give them $500 of my money, and they terrified me, and, like, it was oh just gosh. a really not great experience. So now every time I see this person on TV, I have PTSD. Oh, heck no. Yeah, I literally yeah. can't look You have to tell face. us off screen, so we can also, like, hate <laughs> okay. him. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're going to play a game that I call smash or pass. Well, everyone calls it that, but I'm going to call it eat it or trash it. Okay. So phone calls. Uh, trash it. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Uh, airports. Eat it. Oh. Cause I, that means I'm going somewhere. Okay. Okay. I want to uh, go everywhere. <laughs> onions. Oh my God. Eat it. I love onions. Always. Yes, but mostly raw. I had raw onions today. I'm sorry if you can smell it. Aww. Raw onions. I love a raw onion. Oh my gosh, I love a sautéed onion. But like, what? I the, mean, of course I do too. The sweet, the just like the the punch and crispiness. Punch. Yeah, that okay. you get that cuts through your food is so good. I can appreciate that. Uh, fake meat. A definite trash pass. Go okay. away. Okay. No. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, private chef. I guess I. For somebody, it might be eat it, right? Okay. For would me. Would you have a private not Well, you being someone that doesn't know how to cook, would you have a private chef? Like if I was rolling in the dough, would I have a private chef? No, not daily. But I might have someone do dinner parties for me. I think that would be Oh, nice. cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Okay. And then you say eat it for someone that enjoys private yes. chefing. And, the, and if they hate it as much as I do. Get the hell out. Get the hell out. <laughs> Run for your life. Okay. And then the last one is being a food stylist. Eat it up. Yeah. <laughs> um forever and ever yeah if you as like long as you're if you like we'll to play with food all day right. and if you like to play with food all day and you know it's not you still there are people you're working for and clients who are very mm -hmm. specific sometimes that can get really tedious yeah oh that ice cream is the wrong color or whatever and it's like well it was the right color 10 <laughs> minutes ago yeah or you know that cheese needs to be meltier Oh, or gosh. there's not enough steam coming out of those fish sticks <laughs> or i had a client once where i had to take they didn't like that their fish sticks weren't flaky enough. Oh, no. Their fish sticks. Yeah. Their own. Yeah. Their own. So we had to, like, take fish stick meat out of, like, other fish and, like, pack it into their fish sticks so that when it, we broke it open, it, it was looked more flaky. flaky. Crazy. Oh, my gosh. So if you're okay with doing things like that <laughs> and not getting pissed it. about it, then I think you should do it. Okay. I also want to know is I, we've talked a little bit about like celebrities and private chefing, things like that. Mm -hmm. Give us like a really good experience you've had because I feel like it's been like a lot of – I mean, have you had any? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's really 
<laughs> you don't have to say names, but just like something where it was like, wow, that was a really cool experience. Like they were very, because I feel like celebrities in general are just like an interesting, fascinating mm -hmm. world. And when they're rude to you, it's like, yeah, bitch. Like that's like, I can't believe that person was like that. Right. But it's cool to hear about like nice people too. <laughs> Out of all the celebrities that I've encountered in private chefing, catering, dinner parties, and when there's talent on set for a food styling job, mm -hmm. I'd say 90% have been pleasant experiences. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I only have a few where I'm like, that person wasn't very nice or mm -hmm. that person was rude or like, you know, the mystery person who made me pay for their oven. <laughs> yeah. um, but you I feel also, like appreciated around yeah. on set and things yeah, like that for I the think most part. It also depends... I think people are really intrigued by food styling. Mm -hmm. So sometimes literally I'll, you know, we'll be on set or I was working in a situation and a celebrity came over and was like, what are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, it's kind of cool to see what we're doing. Yeah. Um, private chefing. Like a melting cheese. What do you think? Yeah. With a, <laughs> with a heat gun. Like, yeah. What does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, private chefing is a little different. But also, they are also great because you're in their home, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, they should be great because you're in their yeah, home, you yeah, know? Yeah, they should be. You're feeding their family. Like, yeah. this, I don't, no one should be mean to anyone doing right. this. <laughs> and look, let me tell you, the last, and I'm not saying I've done anything crazy, but the last person you need to be mean to is the person who prepares your food. Right. <laughs> don't i'm terrified of that at restaurants i'm like you were the worst server ever but here's a 25 yes. percent tip because and please don't spit in my food yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've never done that but i'm just saying don't be mean to people who, who cook your food i feel like maybe no I'm just um okay so i was gonna try and segue spitting your food into asking you about your social handles but i don't think it's working so i'm just gonna ask you <laughs> where <laughs> Speaking of spitting into your food, where can people find you? Yeah. Um, I am on Instagram and that's it. Um, well, uh, at what? What's your um, <laughs> chef underscore Danielle Campbell? Okay. I've been toying with changing that and getting rid of the chef, but there's an act, excuse me, an actress that has my name. Oh, so, like, I don't know if I should do that. So I think I'm going to keep chef in front of it. So it's chef underscore Danielle Campbell. And my website is also chef .com. Perfect. I've actually creeped her Instagram and it's really cool. Thank like, you. it's just really cool to see the projects that you do. And like, especially that Jamba Ju, I think that was yesterday you posted mm -hmm. it. I was like, so intrigued. I was like, oh my gosh, I know her. And she did these little like smoothie. F I don't know what part oh you did. Oh my gosh, but... I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this, this is so cool. It was really fun. Yeah. But so the amount of work that went into that and like the prop stylist, the oh, set design, like yeah. it's insane. It looks so. crazy. I mean, yeah. even just watching it and not knowing how things work, I was like, oh, yeah. that yeah. must look, that looks hard. To do that stuff is fun. So if you want to get into food styling, commercial work is fun. It's yeah. hard, but it'd be great cool. if you can have a balance like I do where I do both. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and like giving us the down and dirty of awesome. exactly like what food styling is. Um, and uh, this podcast comes out every single week. So if you want to check it out, subscribe on your podcast platforms or on YouTube. Um, I'm Darcy at Career Coach Darcy. You can follow Danielle at Chef underscore Danielle Campbell. And of course, our amazing um, partners here, Onami, Onami.co. Um, and yeah, check us out next week. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>